This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, today we're going to review one of the weirdest movies I have ever seen in my life. Now, I want you to think about that. Think back to all the weird, bizarre crap that I have reviewed over the years. And I just opened with a line like that. Oh yeah. Today we're looking at a short film called Dreams Come True, a Mule Mom Story. Or is it Dreams Oom True? There's usually a break in the sea right about here. As the movie begins, you'll immediately notice that the art style is very reminiscent of Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron. This is the nicest thing that can be said about this animation. Or the movie in general, really. We open on a farm that specializes in raising Gypsy Vanners, a very particular breed of horse, as is narrated to us through song. That's a cat. <clears throat> if you think I'm sleeping, you'd better think again. My name's Tuffy McDuffy. I'm a real Tuffy. And I can do more things with my eyes closed than most of the characters on this here horse farm can do with their eyes wide open. This is demonstrated by Tuffy doing absolutely nothing else. What was the point of him opening this movie? Then we cut to a weird owl-looking thing demonstrating some karate moves to a rabbit, while two hens are wearing headphones and night vision goggles. You heard me. I never liked him much. He's so yesterday. Just like this scene, I guess. Back to the horsies. We're very proud of the beautiful Gypsy Vanna horses who live here. They were bred by gypsies in Europe for over 60 years. Oh, isn't that cute? Aren't they so fabulous? I think I'll go get my hair done. <laughs> Apparently they got some little goblin creature to voice that horse. <laughs> After some clunky exposition about some other horse called the Gypsy King, who I guess is away on some kind of mission thingy. We cut to later that night, where a coyote beams down from the Starship Enterprise. He was scaring all the animals at the stables. Everybody over at the chicken coop was terribly frightened, especially the golden pheasant. Wait, there's a golden pheasant in this movie? Where? Oh, you mean this thing? Sorry, I thought you meant a bird that looked like this. That didn't sit very well with Farmer Jim. Who seems to be sitting very well indeed. Get back! Back, you brute! Uh, the coyote's over there, horse. The cowboy was courageous in confronting the danger, but the wily coyote was too much for him. You literally called him... A wily coyote. Boo! That's when Farmer Jim stepped in. <laughs> so he chases Cal the coyote away. No, seriously, they gave the rabid coyote, who otherwise has no bearing on the story whatsoever, a name. 
Then Farmer Jim borrows this mammoth donkey from his neighbor, Farmer Dennis, to keep Cal the Coyote off his property. Donkeys are known for one asset in particular. And mammoth donkeys do it in a very big way. I don't think I want to know what that asset is. Big floppy donkey dick. Because when you're being stealthy, be sure to growl for every waking second of your life. This donkey's name was Jack, and he wound up and gave Cal the boot. Time! What was that? And gave Cal the boot. Time! Was the voice actor timing himself? Like... Trying to see how fast he could get through this one take. And then he gave Cal the boot. Time! Actually, he's saying that the donkey kicked him out time after time after time. And he broke all of Farmer Jim's windows in the process. Hooray? Oh, yes. They literally put the wah 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 cue into the soundtrack. The only thing that's missing is the awkward shrug. <laughs> Finally, Cal just gave up, hit the road, and never came back. No more, no more. So Jack here is praised as a hero, which grabs the attention of one of the local mayors, and then it turns into My Little Porny. The end! No, we then dissolve to One Year Later, titles courtesy of Windows Movie Maker. Jack and Who Cares have a mule together named Flo, and then they're killed off by editorial implication. Most movies would try to treat the death of one's parents as tragic, and maybe a little important, but nah. Circle of life, moving on. Then he stuck his snarly head round the corner, and that's when I knew I had him right where he wanted me. Why is the pheasant voiced by Slim Pickens? Piss on you. I'm working for Mel Brooks. Not in the face! Thank you. Then from out of nowhere, the Gypsy King comes back. Um, okay, where was he? What was he doing? Why is he now coming back? Why is he the Gypsy King? That's royal blood that runs in his veins. And they say, one day, another as great will be born to follow in his royal footsteps. But when? Flo was lonely. None of the other horses wanted anything to do with her because she was different. Especially a bit of a nasty gelding named Morph who liked to tease Flo. She longed to play with the horses all day. Wait, is Flo singing her own story? First we have the story being narrated to us through song, then that was quickly hijacked by Buffy McScruffy, and now Flo is narrating through song again? How many narrators does a movie need? Hey, Flo, nay singing. Hee-haw, hee-haw. The miniature horse mare, Velcro, was the only one who ever came to Flo's defense. Her name is Velcro? Because she's small and made of hooks? Because she sticks to things? Because astronauts find her handy? What? I think you're beautiful, Flo, and there's no one else in the world like you. I see. Are they sharing an intimate moment together? I'm shipping it. Their name is Flocro. With only faith in front of me. Oh my god, look at this composition! Why is it necessary that we only see Flo from her neck up? What is Velcro doing below frame that would make Flo have that kind of expression? <laughs> Farmer Jim, Farmer Dennis, and Dr. Pablo were pretty worried about Flo. They knew that what she needed was to have a foal of her own. They knew that the only way to make the sterile since birth mule happy was to make her not sterile anymore. The farmers are kind of stupid that way. But despite a mule's inability to have offspring of their own, the farmers and Dr. Fraud McCrackpot here managed to impregnate Flo. How? The critical conundrum concerning the propagation of a mule, like Flo, is a chromosomal conflagration. To wit, within the equine species, 
an Equus fetus cabalus, otherwise known as a horse, has 64 chromosomes, while an Equus africanus asinus, known by his bodies as a donkey, has only 62. These amorous equinous entities may produce offspring, in Latin, mulus somethingus, aka a mule. But said consequent mule has an anomalous 63 chromosomes, and although she is a wonderful mother, if given a splitting of a difference, she cannot reproduce on her own, ad hominem, ad hoc, ipso facto, etc. Yet, by combining two thimblefuls of fairy dust, 16 bits of smoky mirrors, a dash of mondo science, and seven grams of gobbledygook, we were able to magically give this beautiful mule her own baby. A glorious gypsy vanner. Movie. You can't do that. You can't talk about the difference in chromosome counts between donkeys, horses, and mules in total sincerity. And then talk about how you got a mule pregnant thanks to baby dust, smoke and mirrors, and gobbledygook. I mean, clearly the target audience for this movie is supposed to be little kids. I know that usually kids' movies dance around the awkward question of where babies come from, but if you're going to have enough faith in the intelligence of your juvenile audience to talk about why it's impossible for mules to procreate on their own, you need to follow through. You can't introduce a problem, explain in perfectly scientific terms as to why that problem exists, and then just hand wave it away with magic that doesn't make any sense. Incidentally, as of the publication of this review, the full movie is available on YouTube, the info of which reads, Parents, please be honest in answering your child when asked where babies come from. Explaining in vitro might prove more difficult, so feel free to use Dr. Pablo's explanation from this video. That is a terrible idea. That will only confuse them more. And on top of all that voodoo and hoodoo to make Flo have a fold with the Gypsy King, I guess they somehow made Velcro the biological father? Because science! And the Gypsy King doesn't even live on their farm. How did they get his semen to- Nope, never mind, don't care! And so Flo gives birth to a new Gypsy Vannerful, and the magical prophecy of the King's lineage comes to pass or some shit. and power. It's a horse, not the second coming of Jesus! Also, is there any reason why they couldn't name these Gypsy Vanners something like Romani Vanners? For all the awe and respect these horses apparently demand, you'd think they could call them something other than a racial slur. So that was Dreams Come True, a mule mom story. What the hell was that?! It's decent enough to look at, inconsistent frame rate notwithstanding, but the story doesn't make any sense, the characters don't have any kind of character at all, the whole Gypsy King subplot means absolutely nothing, the explanation of how a mule can reproduce they pulled right out of their ass, so to speak. But you want to know the weirdest part? This is all based on real events. I am so not even kidding. This movie is based on a horse farm in Florida that breeds Gypsy Vanners, and they do it using in vitro fertilization with mules. I guess the idea is to not burden any of the Vanner mares with being pregnant so they can breed more foals in less time, but why not use other horses as the surrogates? It's one thing for people to think of ways to do what's otherwise impossible for themselves, but what made these farmers think of making mothers out of animals that can't be mothers? Or did they somehow see the potential in making something pregnant and turning it into a franchise? Or a cult? Why not make your own dreams come true? Join us in the Mule Moms Kids Club, and we can change the world together. We love dancing to the Mule Moms Jingle. I'm only asking hypothetically, of course. I don't know how they thought about making mules pregnant, and I don't want to know how they thought about making mules pregnant. See you later.
listen to the story of a mule named Flo. She became a mule mom not too long ago. With help from Gypsy Vanners, a miracle took place. A foal was born with beauty and grace. A mule mom, a mule mom, they came from far and wide. A mule mom, a mule mom, their hearts swelled with pride. A mule mom, a mule mom, the love inside her grew. This was a mule mom's dream come true. It's him, the Gypsy King! Why? Why is he the Gypsy King? Was Gypsy Excalibur bestowed upon him from the Gypsy Lady of the Gypsy Lake? Hey guys! It's been a while since I've done an unboxing video here for you, and we have something very, very interesting today, because as often as I get uh, many packages from many different fans, this time I have two different packages, one from Ashlyn Graphics, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, and one from Jacob Gossett, two separate fans, two separate packages, but both of which go together for some strange reason. And Raven knows why. And she's been bugging me about it. <laughs> yes, I do. I didn't know it had come in. That's why this impromptu package unboxing. <laughs> Actually, these have been sitting here for a while, so my bad. <laughs> but let's see what's inside. We are starting with Ashlyn's package here. <laughs> And what do we have? Oh my god. <laughs> Ashlyn, thank you so much. This is just too freaking cute. We have a little lily plushie. Um, Jeez, I didn't know about the lily plushie. That's adorable. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, I don't know what you would call this. This is the kind of, uh, I think this is the kind of a wool work, wool work that you do where you, like, poke it into place. That's what it feels like here. Felting? Felting, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> and this is what you heard of, I'm sure. Also included is a crocheted raven fox. <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable! <laughs> Who, uh, baby, I'm sorry, I love you, but... I gotta stick needles in this thing. What? <laughs> you will not. <laughs> I won't. But come on, looks like She's a little voodoo so doll. She's so cute. Yes, it is. And hmm, actually, I just had a different idea of what to do with this. Hello, baby. Not that that behave yourself. <laughs> hey, what? You don't like me kissing you? <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, Jacob commissioned that. Excellent. Thank you, Jacob. This was very nice. And thank you, Ashlyn, for doing so. <laughs> Got some new uh, set dressing here. <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry, Lily, I'm going to love you too. Because you just say we're adorable. <laughs> the one good thing about the Alpha and Omega series. <laughs> yes. Yes. Lily, why did they do that to you? <laughs> oh, man. All right, now let's see what Jacob has for me here, since, again, these two packages go together. Like I said, Jacob commissioned uh, yes. the Raven Fox plushie. <laughs> so let's get this over here. <clears throat> oh, first things first, we got a letter, and I'm trying to not see anything else inside for the time being. Dearest Bob Show, he says, My greatest apologies for your big surprise coming so late. Um, apology very easily accepted. <laughs> the mother-daughter team who previously made your little stuffed wolf of Bob were sending another package by my request. Turns out their post office suffered an accident which made it sent out so late. It's quite alright. It was sent to me late, I 
I'm opening and appreciating this late. It's all good, right? Right? <laughs> Uh, when you receive a package from Ashlyn's Graphics, uh, it's the surprise I had mentioned about in the last package I sent a year ago. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Quite a surprise it was. <laughs> you may also be wondering why I changed my name from Jacob to Judith on my Patreon. The reasoning behind this is because I am transgendered. I'm... Currently... Sorry... I'm currently starting my process to make the change. I've had one friend turn me down, calling me a parody of a woman. I am sorry, that is not cool. However, I hope you understand- Congratulations, Judith. And we support you. <laughs> yes. Um, ooh, yes, I gotta change my credits, don't I? <laughs> yes, you do. Sorry for the late change. I hope you understand my struggles and that I have your support. This package is far smaller than the last one I sent you. This is mainly due to the time and forthcoming move. However, I did manage to include a few things I hope you either enjoy or enjoy tearing into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's great because you know if you send me some form of media, I'm either going to legitimately enjoy it or just enjoy tearing it to pieces. <laughs> don't let him don't let him fool you. He loves to be angsty. I <laughs> If only it gives me a chance to vent my frustration because why? Why do you have to be so stupid? <laughs> uh, ta -ta -ta. There and there's my place. Below I left a few riddles to some of what's inside. Your friend, Jacob slash Judith. Ah, I'm just going to stick with the Judith for the time being. <laughs> Let's see. One. I hope you didn't think I was a beast for sending you a bar of soap shaped like a game. I did not mean to start a war. Ooh. <laughs> nice riddle. Very alluding. <laughs> Two. Don't dig a grave for this film because Shia was cast as a uh, main lead. It's good. Oh, the only good movie ever that Shia LaBeouf was in. The the only good Shia LaBeouf movie ever. The only the only movie he was in which people like calling good for some reason. I'm sorry, am I the only one who enjoyed him in Indiana Jones 4? That was I didn't know he was in Indiana Jones 4. Okay. <laughs> that is the least annoying I have ever seen him. It's like, oh my god. He's actually an actor. He's playing a character here. He's not just Shia LaBeouf running, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, nope, because Indy 4 sucked. That means we gotta think that he sucked in that too. <laughs> I didn't think it sucked. Well, welcome to the club. Of maybe half a dozen of us. <laughs> <laughs> Third and final riddle. What's this football doing out here in the middle of the jungle? It must be a treasure previously believed to have been forever lost in time. That one I didn't get. I was going to say, that's, that's... I got the other two! That's definitely there. <laughs> but, let's see. Now we are getting into the package itself. Beast War. Hmm. Hmm. That's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we got here. You got mm, bubble packaging. <laughs> oh, we've got much more than what the riddles mentioned. First of all, we have Undercover Brother. <laughs> oh Lord. Featuring Denise Richards in very very tight pants. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, we've got some Easter material with Veggie Tales, an Easter Carol. <laughs> you know what? I am not. I, I do not dislike Veggie Tales. No, they're good at what they do. I, I like Veggie Tales. <laughs> you know, it's it's a little preachy, but considering that it is a Christian cartoon, it it could be very preachy. But it's it, just it, a little it, preachy, and it's very entertaining. It could have been a lot worse. Yes. Um, as for the, um, 
Beast Wars riddle, we have a copy of the of the very rare Beast Wars video game on PS1. Awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> very cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> do, you, do you have a way to play that? I do have a PlayStation, yes. <gasps> oh, boy. Hmm. If only there was something I could do to show that off. Something like, I don't know, maybe some kind of a review, but you can't review video games, can you? People don't do that. You don't do that. Yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> And suddenly that football in the jungle uh, riddle is making a bit more sense with this. Hey Arnold, the jungle movie. <laughs> oh, football head. Okay. Yes, football head. Um, I have actually not heard of this. I knew there was a Hey Arnold movie from like the late 90s, early 2000s or something. But in the jungle, this flew right over my head. <laughs> but these people know what they're doing. Sure, I'll, <laughs> I'll enjoy that. And, of course, we are getting to the bottom of the proverbial barrel here. It's a cute movie. Maybe. <laughs> I tried to watch it once. I'm trying to walk in on some other people watching it. It's like, oh, okay, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to enjoy it. Nope, nope, can't do it. Just want to shove him into one of the holes and bury him alive. <laughs> Just shut up! Please! <laughs> well, we got some other goodies in here, too. Including... What Dreams May Come. Which I've heard wonderful things about, but which I have never actually seen. And this will be actually a little cathartic in the wake of a world minus Robin Williams. So, it's a Robin Williams movie. Yeah, oh, I have never heard of it. It was one of his uh, sleeper hits, but yes, a hit nonetheless. <laughs> I don't think Robin Williams was ever in a bad movie. If it was a bad movie, he made it uh, at least tolerable. Yeah, yeah, that's how you describe the low points in his career. <laughs> There are movies out there that are less than perfect, let's call them. But you're watching him? Okay, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the Little Rascals. Actually, uh, not a fan. Not a fan of the original <laughs> or the reboot. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's a cute movie. <laughs> Something to add to my collection. Guess I'll be watching this by myself. Sorry, baby. <laughs> and something which is definitely going to make for some uh, review fodder, I'm sure. Bambi 2. I have no idea how you turn material like this into a sequel, but it's Disney. They can turn anything into a sequel, apparently. <laughs> has uh, Bambi Man reviewed Bambi 2? I'm sure he has. It, I would be very, very surprised if he hasn't already. <laughs> but maybe he can, maybe he can show up in your review of it. Maybe who knows? I don't know. He is the Bambi man. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. Wait a minute. There's a Bambi too. When did that happen? But <laughs> 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 uh, thank you very much, Judith. I will enjoy all of those movies or not. <laughs> He'll enjoy hating them otherwise. <laughs> yes. But I will definitely enjoy my new little friends here, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> you have to put out this unboxing video before you can start using them on your set. That is very true. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you again for those fun little goodies, and excellent job on the uh, plushies there, Ashlyn. <laughs> um, if you have... Uh, an Etsy um, store or anything like that, <laughs> go ahead and send me the link so I can <laughs> put it in the uh, info in this video. And anyone else wants to send me fun little goodies like that or movies or whatever, go ahead and send it to the P.O. box in the corner. And as always, I will see you later.
subscribe.